And we're doing really well with time here, about staying on time here. So I love, my favorite thing I do for hair, the reason I love hair is recipient side creation. Uh, I think that is the, the cornerstone of, of artistry and it's, it makes my life a lot of fun. Um, this is obviously not a good result. This is just the stuff that we see in the past of bad recipient sites, of bad design work that just looks absolutely frightening and, and unreasonable. And you've heard the subtleties now when they're, we're not in the era anymore of plugs, but we still get these bad results because what you do and what the technicians do are so very, very important as a team, unlike a rhinoplasty where you may be the majority of the result. In, in the case with a hair, your team is very important. I, I emphasize, and I'm repetitive in my, in my lecturing because it's so hard to remember all this, go back and look at that Norwood diagram and memorize it because it's important to understand what actually exists in nature, otherwise you'll be designing hair that just don't, the patterns don't match. You could design a very low hairline, they've got a very recessed temple, you've got a lateral hump dropping, and you just design something that would, just doesn't exist in real nature, and that subtlety comes from years of experience. Um, these are the, again, if you understand the subcomponents of the head, it's so important to understand all these subcomponents. If you don't understand them, you will not be making recipient sites that match natural angles. Well, what are natural angles? So in the front hairline, they, for a man, they all go straight and low. There's this cascading effect on the temporal point, and they go down. These are very low angled. They're almost flat to the scalp. That's why these are so hard. They can arch a little higher when you're going up toward the posterior mid-scalp, but you almost, in this frontal zone, can't go too low. The crown, I go very high. And the reason for that is the crown, it, it, it naturally, when you look from the side view of the scalp, the angles go like this, and then they fall like this. So the crown allows you to more densely pack the grafts when you're placing them higher up, and they, and they don't compete uh, and underneath the scalp when they're tightly packed and vertical. And they create more of a visual lift, because when you look at a balder person from the crown, they lose this shape. And this is, I'll show you that in a, in a couple slides in a moment. But that is something very, very important. And you say, well, that's so confusing. Don't touch the crown for the first two years. That's, crown is not hard to do but it's a lot harder than uh, the frontal hairline. And so this is some examples of angles and directions. Angles uh, refer, I'll, I'll give you a slide on that, but angles refer to the AP and direction refers to the side to side, but these are very low angles and this, you can see hairs grow differently around the head. You cannot make the same just making holes. They gotta fit, that makes sense. This is the, what I was alluding to earlier very low angles, high angles in the crown, lower angles, lower angles. And this is, this is, these little subtleties are actually what makes hair fun. And this is what I was referring to before. Angles refer to the AP direction. Direction refers to the lateral, laterality, and tilt is more of a complicated topic for a lot of times for women, you, you don't need to know about it. Um, not right now. And so this is, I go back to the same drawing. Remember, if you start thinking of the scalp as a box, you can start articulating these little design points that are based on sub-anatomic regions of the scalp, and they're all important geographically for, for the head. Um, there are different ways to make recipient sites. I no longer use the micro punch because sometimes the graft growth is not as consistent. I use a mixture of parallel, also known as sagittal, and sometimes I use perpendicular coronal. And I'll show you some of those, not because in an hour I'm gonna teach you how to do this, but this is a creative, creative process. If I can get anything across to you in an hour, is hair is not boring. It's, it can be as creative as a rhinoplasty if you engage with it in such a manner. So again, you know, in the past I tried to explain what I was doing here, and I realized it took me 10 minutes to explain this, and there's no reason to. The goal is just to have you understand, when I'm designing, I get a number from my, my staff, and then I think really hard of how am I gonna allocate those graphs to make a beautiful design pattern. This is a, net, a normal male pattern. You can see they go forward. And also when you're designing on this, this remember the head is not flat, it's round, and it's very easy when I look at my, my students draw or make recipient sites, they tend to go this way with their left hand, and then they go too straight on with their right hand, just by three to four degrees off. And I see that, and, and I love, running a hands-on workshop because then I can watch you and get feedback and then for the rest of your life I'm hoping that you have that on your iPhone and you're not going to make those same mistakes and I encourage you to go and repeat this. I'm going to give you a little exercise at the end of how to do this at home. I do this every night. My first year, I, every night I had a melon making sites and having it judged. So that's something that I would recommend. Look at, the, the other key thing is there are no abrupt transitions anywhere. If you make a, an angle here then all of a sudden you're over here 
you've done a bad disservice to the patient. One, it's not combable. Two, you're going to have angles that splay open that, do, that, that you'll see baldness. And three, it doesn't exist in nature. Every angle is slowly transitioning, slowly transitioning. And that's an important lesson here. Uh, this is, again, the crown. Look at the slowly transitioning, slowly turning. And that's important that there's no abrupt transitions. Female hairline, the cowlick, slowly transitioning. And all these little things are different. I call you back to know, understanding how many recipient sites to make based on what you calculated early on. I use just standard needles for the majority of my sites. Sometimes I'll use other instruments, like I like this SM62 blade. That gives me a little bit width, greater width if I need a little bit greater width on, on, to harvest. This is sequential tumescence. So unlike what I did for the donor, where I went back there and I had to, har I had to put all the tumescence in, this I put in 20 cc's. I work on some sites, 20 cc's, because my harvest takes me you know, five minutes. But the, the sites take me two hours, so you don't want the tumescence gone. And again, you're protecting vascularity, and you're allowing uh, less edema postoperatively with this. So the other thing that's important is before you start making the sites, how long do you make your bent needle? You make it to match the graft, okay? And then you test it. If the graft doesn't fit the site, it's gonna compress or sink, cause pitting, or not work. And so that's an important lesson here. Um, the positioning of the patient is important. When the patient is supine, your hand will naturally create a low angle to the scalp. When they're sitting, you have to force it this way, right? Now, what's interesting is, actually, I have them sitting up. I don't know if that's the next one or not. Yeah, sitting up for the crown because I can actually create a higher angle more easily. So you want to naturally create a more angle, higher angle in the crown, and you want to naturally create a lower angle in the front. So this is just a, a quick video. Does this play by itself or do you have to push the button, Nick? So these are just making sagittal sites. If you wonder how to, you know, what are sagittal sites. And I'm counting in my head, one, two, three, four. I have a mental number of what I'm counting. And I'm just making these interlocked and I'm making them uh, forward facing. There's no splay on these sites, okay? And then I'm making uh, these cor uh, coronal sites go and play that. So in other words, they're going like this. And he said, well, why would you make coronal sites? The, there, there's really two reasons that I, I, I make coronal mix with sagittal. One, my staff know where to place the three hair grafts and where to place the two hair grafts. The threes are usually coronal and the twos and ones are usually sagittal. And you say, well, why would you arbitrarily pick that? I didn't. Sagittal sites have one benefit. They are, there are two benefits. One is that they are directed toward the, the angle, that I, the direction I want it to go. Very easy for the hairs to be controlled this direct, going this way. So the hairline, I love it because I can control the direction of my shape very, very effectively. Um, the other benefit is if, 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 there is, if there are areas of existing hairs, sagittal sites have less risk of transecting existing hairs. Coronal sites have the benefit is that they're angled uh, this way is more controlled because if you put a graft here, it doesn't slide up a little bit. So by having them placed like this, they're controlled this way. And if you have a three hair graft, they can splay more and create more awning over the scalp. Does that make sense? And so that's why I pick typically one and twos. I'll use uh, sagittals, threes. I'll sometimes use coronals. But this is just, again, not for you to memorize all these details. It's more for you to understand that the creative side of hair. And if I can get you excited about hair, and that's the only thing you have leaving this hour, boom, that's great. If you don't remember a single thing I said, I hope you remember that, because it can be a lot of fun. And I really do have fun, it's not a lie. So I draw, uh, this is just uh, step by step, I draw a line. I start now with the one hair. I used to start with two hairs. I start with one hairs. I immediately regularize that line. Then I come back and I further finesse it with a second pass create more sentinel hairs. Then I further finesse it a third time. I'm constantly finessing and fussing over this hairline and making it a little bit more jagged, but not too jagged, keeping the shape. Then after I've designed four rounds, sometimes five rounds of one hair sites, I start to build my two hair sites behind them. And that, you see how they're all interlocked? Interlock meaning like this, the sites are like this. They're not like this because you're going to see through them. And so I'm, I'm making more and more two hair sites, building especially in the temple area. Then the three hair sites, I make sometimes chrono, sometimes sagittal. And I'm making, for example, chrono sites in the central forelock because I want more density in this zone, which is why people look bald in that area if you don't get enough density. And then this is showing you in real life instead of a schematic, there is some hairline work. I'm going to draw some one hairs in. I'm going to further finesse those one hairs, make some sentinel hairs, which are the, the free floating one hairs out there. 
I'm going to then start building uh, some two hair grafts going back here, and then I'm going to finish it with some three hair grafts, uh, sorry, three hair sites to accommodate that. And so this is another model. If you can remember a model here, the model is a coastline. When you think of a coastline, you think of a jagged, irregular uh, line that becomes more and more jagged the closer you get to it. And that's what a hairline should look like. Uh, this is some examples uh, you can see here. You can, you can see that I basically made uh, sagittal sites going this way. I made some coronal sites for the, for, uh, for the temples so that they go very low. Actually, today I actually make a lot more sagittal sites. This slide is a little bit older. This is an example of sagittal and coronal sites being used for one hair grass for the first two or three rows, two hair sites here three hair sites here. And if you notice, I've gone back with my three hair sites and gone back to sagittal. Because now I'm an existing hair, I don't want to chop through this. I believe that you can leverage the benefit of your uh, directionality based on the patient. And this is also showing you another little principle is slight convergence. My, my angles go not only forward, but slightly inwards. And the reason for that is that when you do this, it allows you to get a little bit more visual density to the central forelock because the scalp is curved. So the grafts can fall away. Everything you want is aimed inwards. And you say, well, I, you know, starting out, I'm not going to remember all this. You don't have to do it. I only started doing convergence patterns in the last five years. And these are subtleties. And the point of saying this is I learned so much from going to meetings just like this. So I encourage you to try to go to the ICHRS, the Harris Society meeting once a year, and you're going to get a ton of information that's amazing. If you want to know what's the latest and greatest of hair, I'm giving a talk right after this at 3.50 in the biotechnology room where I talk about the top nine or ten trends going on right now in the world of hair. And so just designing patterns, I show you this again just to emphasize that it is a creative process and it can be a lot of fun when you design. Okay, that's all the point of these little diagrams. So this is showing you let me see what we're doing on time. This is showing you just bending needles and using a melon uh, to make some sites. So there's the sagittal, getting ready for sagittal. This is getting ready for coronals. You draw a little melon, a little hot, smiley face. You can see these are, when I, is, these are too far apart, OK? These are too close. They're going to bl blend in each other, and it's going to be impossible to place. These are not interlocking. These are all errors, as you see. This is splaying. If you look very carefully, this is more subtle. It goes a little to the left, and these go forward. And these are a little bit closer, and these are not. So these subtle things, you say, well, that's really nitpicky. It is. But then aren't you nitpicking on your noses? Aren't you nitpicking on everything else you do? Well, I'm going to nitpick your, your work on your hair. Because if you want to do quality hair, that's the difference between average and great work. And, and, th and this is density. Look at this is denser, and this is looser. And the angles are off, and these are all sporadic. That little subtlety will make it weirder. The patient's going to say, you know, I'm denser on the right. Why? Because you didn't pay attention. You, as a right-handed physician on a curved scalp, you're going to make sites that are not exactly the same. And if that's your problem, when I work with you, I'm going to work with you fixing that one problem. And then I come back 20 minutes later, look if you've corrected that. And so this is, to me, a lot of fun. Um, variable density. You can see tighter, looser. These are just errors uh, of design. Air is too shallow. You need to go all the way to the hub. Another thing I've noticed when I watch my students over the last seven years is they don't go all the way to the hub. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Well, if you don't go all the way to the hub, you're going to have shallow sites. You can't place into that. It's impossible. So you've got to go full depth every single time. So I find some people just going, do, 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 do. No. You need to go boom, boom, design, design, shape. OK, let's put another one here. And that's the speed that I'm designing. That's why it takes me a couple hours to design this, you know? It's, it's not a 10-minute procedure. If you want to make it one, you can, but then you're, you can also make a rhinoplasty 30 minutes if you want. You can do any of these things. Error is a hairline is too straight. Error, the hairline is too irregular and too loose. And this is just showing you the same thing for the third time now using a melon. I designed the first row of hairlines. I make some sentinels with the one hairs. I make some two, ones and twos posteriorly. And then I, I fix some little gaps I didn't like. And then I come back and, oh, so that's the end of that. This is just practicing density. How do you get good at density? Because the other thing is, let's say you need to put 1,700 uh, sites in a, over 80 square centimeters. How do you consistently do that where you're not halfway through and go, oh, I just put all 1,700 sites in the front of the head? How do you do that? Well, don't do it on your first patient. So what you want to do is work on a melon, draw 80 square centimeters out, and see if you can ma make 25 
per square centimeter, 30 per square centimeter, not more than that uh, to start. I mean, you could go higher, but you want to be able to cover that distance, not run out of graphs. And you have to repeatedly do this so that you don't run out of graphs. Plus, you don't want to e make it equal spread. You want the density in the front to be mainly in the front because the back doesn't matter as much. And then you want to slowly get, create your gradient so it's less and less as you go back. Can you do that? If you can do that, can you do that consistently? If you can do that consistently, can you do that with now 40 per square centimeter? Can you do that at 20 per square centimeter? Can you do it 40 in the front, 35 in the middle, 20 in the sides? Can you do 20 in the sides, 35 in the these little subtleties are what makes a great transplant from an average transplant. And these exercises are great. So this is just showing you measuring how to find area and starting. You draw it out with a, a pen, and then you start making sites there. And this is the crown design going higher angles. I was showing close up, showing you uh, the, the crown design. And this is a different crown going from the other side, uh, going counterclockwise. So I hope this, this uh, lecture taught you about being creative. We're finished at 3.30, right? We're almost done. Thank you for your attention here. Let's go to the FUE versus FUT uh, talk, which is the next one up.